Hello everyone. If you are someone who is new to mobile application pen testing or if you want to learn how we can use Frida framework for analyzing Android applications then do watch this video till the end. For this video we are going to use an Android application which is a crack me from mobile security testing guide. Also an additional piece of information for those who are just getting started into mobile security. So you can use this OS mobile security testing guide which they have renamed it to mobile app security as a manual in getting started with mobile app pen testing and from this mstg challenge we are going to learn about how we can bypass root detection at java layer of the application and then we will see how to perform hooking in native library at any arbitrary address in order to intercept and even modify the cpu registers and memory so you can download this crack me which i have already downloaded over here uncrackable uh, level 2.apk from the link I have put in the description Okay, so enough of talking now. Let's directly jump into the analysis part. First of all, let me navigate to the directory where this apk file is present So it's here Right and now in order to extract the apk we need to run apk tool and pass this t flag to tell uh, This apk tool to decompile this apk for us and then pass our application name hit enter and now it's going to decompile this apk file and give us the resources assets and the dex file of the application which basically contains all the java code so there we go now if we see we got a new directory with the application name and if we go inside this directory and list all the files and folders we can see that we have got the android manifest file lib file resource file smiley file right so that's pretty much everything which usually being packed in the apk file now to analyze this apk file as a first step we can open this apk file in a tool called jadex what this tool basically does is it will unpack the apk file and show us all the resources along with its decompiled java code so for that navigate to the directory where i have kept my jadex tool and to launch it simply put jadex gui so this is the jadex gui tool which we can use to analyze the application so let's open up this uncrackable level 2 apk it will take some time to extract the apk so it's done and here we can see uh, we have got the source code over here this is the decompiled source code and then we have got this resources directory where we can see the android manifest file classes.dex file and all other directories which usually present in the apk under this rest folder we got all the uh, layout and uh, resources related stuff then under this lib folder if the application contains any native code then uh, based on the architecture that shared library will be stored under this so under arm64 we can see that libfoo.so is a shared object file so as we know android manifest is the first file which we usually want to check because this is the entry file uh, which gives us the idea about what the application is going to do when we launch it and what are the different components that the app is going to use like the services broadcast receivers activities and stuff like that so over here you can see that uh, this is the application and it has only one activity with the name main activity and then uh, the category is the main launcher so the application only has one main activity and this activity will be executed or launched whenever we press the icon in our device okay apart from this nothing interesting over here because it's a pretty basic application and no other components are being used so now let's quickly go to this main activity which is under this package sg.vintage point over here we have this package and if we extract it we can see uh, there are two uh, other packages as well but our main activity is under uncrackable 2 so let's extract this one and here is our main activity so if we double click it we will be able to see the decompiled java code right now over here just like any usual android activity we have got all the imports then this is the public class main activity and on the top of this class or the beginning of this class we can see that there is a static block which is loading a library called foo and this is foo library we have just seen under this lib folder right libfoo.so so this is the same library so as soon as our main activity will be launched 
this native library is going to be loaded right then we have some functions but uh, if you know about the android architecture and how the android application works on create is the first method which will be executed whenever any activity is launched so this is the entry point for our main activity we can say and here first of all we can see there is the init function which is being called if we look into the definition of this init function which is over here it says private native void int so this native keyword suggests that this init function is defined inside the native library and the only native library present in this application is this libfoo so this init function has to be present in this libfoo.so all right so we can't really look into the code uh, of this init right now so just keep it aside for now and let's try to analyze rest of the application so next we can see we have this string root detected uh, under this if condition right but uh, let's quickly also try to run the application in the device and observe its behavior let's try to launch it so indeed we observed that within the short time frame uh, there was a dialogue which got triggered with the title root detected right so this condition we need to bypass in order to avoid this root detection dialogue from being populated and if we go into this a function which is defined here we can see that indeed in this function there is an alert dialogue which is being shown with the string message which is being passed from here okay so uh, the first thing which we need to do is to bypass this if condition then uh, we can also see that it is checking whether the app is debuggable or not and then it is also checking whether uh, we are debugging this application using any uh, java debugger but for this video we are only going to use uh, runtime dynamic instrumentation framework called frida and we are not solving it through any debugger so these checks will not get triggered so let's not bother about these now first of all let's try to see what these checks are so as we can see in this if condition there is a b.a method which is being called and if we double click to this a method it will take us to this class where this a method is defined and over here we can see its written type is boolean and it's checking for environment path whether su binary is present or not so in our system environment if it find a, a su binary then it will return true otherwise it will return false similarly uh, it's checking other functions as well under the same b class so if we go back to our b class we can see that these are the other two functions and over here in the second function is checking for the build tags and if the build tag contain text keys which usually the case with the emulators then it will return true otherwise false similarly in the c function uh, return type is boolean only and if any of these path or the apk is present in the system then it will return true otherwise it will return false now you might have guessed already right in order to bypass this check or fail this if condition all we need to do is to return false always from all these three functions so using frida instrumentation we can easily hook into these functions and manipulate the return value of all these functions in one go and that should probably bypass our root detection check so let's try to do that for that i am going to go into my editor and i am going to create a script over here let's name it as bypass.js okay just to give you a quick idea about uh, what freda is and how it works so freda is a powerful dynamic instrumentation toolkit that allows you to inject javascript into the running process and through that we can manipulate the behavior of those processes so that's why we have created the javascript uh, file and since we are hooking into the methods of java classes we need to ensure that the java class has been initialized and for that we have a function or the api in freda called java.perform function and then the body so this way we can ensure that all these hooks which we are going to define inside this body uh, will only be triggered or attached when our java classes has been loaded so now inside this block we need to tell freda to attach hook to the particular method of a class so first of all we need to figure out which method of which class we are going to hook so here we have identified that we have a b class and we need to hook to a b and c methods of this class right in freda we have a function called java.use 
which is used to wrap a java class or java object into a frida equivalent object so since we now know that we need to hook into this method of b java class so all we need to do is call this java dot use method and pass our java class which is under this package right so let's copy paste this and the class name is p right and let's store it into a variable called b okay so now we have got our frida object which points to this java class okay now this p object will be containing all the methods present inside this class so then uh, in frida we have an implementation property uh, which basically represents the function that is currently being used to implement a function right so we can use this implementation property to assign or override the existing function so let's say in the b class we have this function right a which we need to re-implement then we can use the implementation property and assign a new function to it and one thing to note here is that we need to define the same number and same type of arguments which the existing function takes so here we can see that this function does not have any arguments uh, so here also we are not going to put anything in this function arguments right then here let's just mention or put a log that b dot a function is called so this we will use as debugging purpose now in order to get the current implementation of this function and see what the current function is returning we can simply do that by calling this dot a okay and this will call the existing implementation which is this implementation and based on the environment path it will either return true or false okay so let's store this return value in this return variable and print the original return value here the original return value is this right and now we can modify this return value to false and then we will return this from our new implementation so the concept is very simple call java.use function of frida and pass the class in which you want to perform hooking and then uh, from this class object just index your function which you want to hook and using this implementation property provide or assign a new function which will be executed instead of your original function at runtime okay but as we can see in this main activity it's a awk condition so just by bypassing one function is, is not enough we need to bypass all these functions together so now i hope you understood what we need to do next let's copy paste this code okay and now instead of a we are going to hook our b class so here index b similarly here for c class okay let's rename the logging functions and here calling b function instead of a similarly calling c function here and then always returning false in all these three functions so here in the terminal you can see we have our script over here and in order to launch your process or your application through frida we have this command called frida then you need to tell this where your target is so uh, currently our target is on our mobile device which is attached through usb so we need to uh, use this flag hyphen u then uh, we have another flag hyphen l through which we can list our script and then we have hyphen f flag which which is used to spawn the application so if your process is not running already you can use this hyphen f flag and it will spawn the application or launch the application and then we need to pass the package name of the application so let's see what's the package name dun, dun, dun. okay here we have the package name osp mstg and crackable 2 let's copy this and paste it here here's our device and hit enter now as you can see it says fail to spawn new gadget to attach on shield android so this error occurred because our frida server is not yet running on the device so let me quickly start frida server by going into the shell i have my frida server present in this location now my frida server is up and running and if i run the same command again i should be able to launch the application boom now you can see 
this pawn is successful and here in the logs you can see our uh, functions which are being called so here you can see first of all b.a function is called and the original return value was true but then we have modified it to false right that we have not yet printed obviously so this is for the second function and this is for the third function and our application now is running and it's not crashing anymore so congrats we have bypassed the first check which is present in this challenge that is root detection so i hope you enjoyed watching this video and don't forget to hit a like button and subscribe to this channel and in the next video we will see how we can extract this secret which is required to solve this challenge